All right, everybody, Jesse and Rennie are back in the podcast studio at Cycle News, and we're bringing you a comparison test of adventure proportions. Yeah, massive it, adventure. Massive, massive mid-sized massive proportions of adventureness coming to you now. And the big deal is KTM 890 Adventure R versus Yamaha Tenere 700. Mm -hmm. This battle has been fought before. You know, there's a lot of comparisons of, of these two bikes out there. Yeah. Um, we've kind of held off from doing this test for a long time. Partly because the bikes aren't that available all the time to get next to each other, but another reason is they're not really that close on paper. Not really, no. <laughs> they, they, they're they considered in the adventure market because they both kind of attack the adventure world the same way. Aggressive, more off-road, less touring, more adventuring. Yeah. But on paper, they're quite a, quite a ways apart. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It starts with cost. Yeah, I mean, you, you're, you're going at... What we we'll call it ten grand, nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars for the Yamaha, and what fourteen thousand one hundred ninety nine as a base price for the KTM. Yeah. And by the time you throw a couple of goodies, which you're probably going to want, you know, you definitely quick shifter and rally mode and that kind of definitely stuff. You're at fifteen those. grand. Yes. So you got a fifty percent price difference between the two bikes straight off the bat, which right. is pretty significant when you're talking about you know ten to fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> for sure, you're 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 still both bikes are still providing an incredible value. In this market, there used to be adventure used to be dominated by twenty thousand dollar, yeah, high end BMWs where you're, you know, touring, not, not getting gnarly off road or not exploring as much as you're touring, and now we're we're under ten grand for capable off road capable but street comfortable, yeah, adventure motorcycles. Yeah. Like the and value here is huge. Yeah. Yamaha leading that charge, a ten thousand dollar bike that is massively capable. Well, I mean, you think back to like when BMW was really the only game in town as far as the adventure the mid-size adventure bikes go and this is before your 790s certainly long before the the t7 ever came out and they were still like what 14 15 16 thousand dollars right. so you could go and buy yourself a second hand bigger generation a bigger bike like a 1190 or something or other for mm -hmm. way cheaper right and you get a hell of a lot more performance so yeah it's good to see the manufacturers and now fine especially yamaha are finally going what the hell with this like give yeah. everybody a base bike that then you can that's the other thing too it's a very very tunable bike you can yeah. throw a lot of bits on it and there are parts that let's be honest it needs yeah but for sure. yeah it's good to see the they've, they're not really gouging people as much as they once did no i think you're 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 hitting a good value if you pick any of these bikes. Um, the Yamaha comes in at ten grand. Um, really good value, extremely attractive price, but also an accurately priced motorcycle in my opinion. Yep. The bike is ten thousand dollars of performance and of um, premium level features. Yep. It doesn't fight above its weight in the fifteen thousand dollar class as effectively as some people assume. Yeah. Um, because it is missing some of the higher performance features, benefits, output, and tuning that bikes like the KTM 890 come with for that fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 price sure. tag. Um, and I think that's where the separation starts really going apart and you really start shopping for price at this point. Yeah. If you're, if you're shopping for price and you, you only have $15,000 to spend on your purchase, you can get a Yamaha Tenere 700 for 10 grand and you have $5,000 left for a cool mountain bike or for, you know, more parts for your Tenere 700. Yep. Um, but you're still not going to have a hundred horsepower 890. You're still not going to have the suspension that comes stock on that bike. You're not going to have the tunable riding aids, which are extremely effective. Mm. Um, and you're going to have a little bit less performance. Yeah. I think across yeah, the board. Well, the, I think too, with that note on the tunable sort of things with the KTM is that, yeah, KTM's really kind of smoothed out a lot of the bugs that they had with that initial 790. Yep. It's now very much a plug and play thing. Um, For sure. They don't say, I mean, I don't know of that many issues that people are really having anymore. Uh, it's still like, it still uses the the base chassis that it came out with last year, which was the, or the year before, which has the tank down the bottom and all that. So, I mean, yeah. you know, ge geometry wise and design wise, they're completely different bikes as Definitely. well. So, you, if you look at, the Yamaha, it's very much your traditional style bike. You know, your yeah, right. fuel tank's up high, it's long and tall. And yeah. I mean, you look at the two bikes side by side and the Yamaha looks dr dramatically bigger than the KTM. Yeah. So you, you do have options to be able to 
put a lot of work into a Yamaha if you really want to. Uh, I think people that when they're going to look at these two things, they really got to be honest about what kind of riding they're going to do. Like if you right. want to get out there and really get after it, there's really no choice. You go for the KTM. But yeah, you, there's very few things that that Yamaha can't do that mm-hmm. the KTM can do. Yeah, um, it just comes down to the you know intricacies of that performance. So yeah. the KTM power delivery is exceptional and the power output is magical yeah it's great the those motor, riding modes like that rally pro mode is so sick yeah and that's going to cost you some more money but it's just it's kind of like once you taste it you're never going to go back you're going to have a hard time backing off and going to a tenere 700 and yeah. ex- if you're expecting an 890 adventure r experience you're going to have a hard time going back to the tenere and just being satisfied with not having that level of power not having that level of um engagement with the rally mode where you can control slip in different Mm. degrees or you know the cornering abs system that is just fantastic the off-road riding mode which automatically adjusts a lot of things to make off-road riding more effective um so it's it's really like if you've tasted the water it's It's going to be hard to go back again it's like flying business class it it is it's like back to coach somehow you got lucky to get business class you're not going to go back to coach exactly um even if that coach ticket is an incredible deal, you're still going to be thinking, man, there is a business class seat up there. That's a lot nicer. Yeah, they get, they get the free beers. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's why this comparison to me is always a little treacherous. It's always like, which one's better? That's the first question in a comparison. Which one's better? And you're like, the, the KTM 890 Adventure R is better. Yeah. You'd hope it was for 50%. Per yeah, it more. costs 50% more money. It yeah. should be better. Yeah, exactly. It has more horsepower up. It has more torque. Yeah. It has more advanced electronics that are proven and effective yeah so yeah it's better yeah but what if i want to spend you know 12 grand yeah. well, for well ten- you don't have a choice you, yeah. buy, you the buy the yamaha and you get two thousand dollars worth of sweet stuff <laughs> yeah exactly. and that's a great choice too yeah. but you're not going to have the same things you're going to get with the 890 so let's talk about what the yamaha does really well and there are some things that it does better than the ktm 890 uh, number one comfort Basically, across the board, the Yamaha Tenere 700 is going to be more comfortable, including wind protection on the highway, uh, suspension action on the highway, especially the little chattery bumps or expansion joints in concrete. It gobbles them up where the KTM's got a little harder edge Mm -hmm. hitting you, you know, harder in the hands. Um, The Tenere 700 only gives you a little bit less comfort if you get off-road bigger impacts because the suspension is so soft, yep. soft stock. Yep. Um, so that's not going to be more comfortable. But in general, the Yamaha is a more comfortable machine. Yeah. I, I mean, think, I rode the, I took the Tenere 700 down Baja uh, right. last year for three days of probably the gnarliest adventure riding I've ever done. Mm-hmm. And I think absolutely ate it up. And, yeah. You know, it was, yeah, definitely a bit on the soft side for some of the stuff. Like we followed a lot of the Baja race track, course, yeah. Um, which just, made me realize how mental that race really is yeah right um but yeah the the, it it definitely took all the punishment that i could give it um Mm -hmm. that i was willing to give it as well because i had to get out of there as well i couldn't handle how and handle (laughs) punctures or anything like that but yeah it it went it went great and i was really quite surprised at how capable it was and you only really find that stuff out if you go for two three four day missions and really bomb it yeah for Um, sure so that was that was a nice sort of surprise the the comfort on the road was brilliant yep. absolutely loved it uh, and being a bit taller than you know most other guys that ride these things it's like uh i always found that the wider stance from the bars longer range to, from peg to the seat was a was a winner for me um if if i were only doing light trail stuff and doing more not not commuting but like just mm-hmm. using it as an everyday thing, purpose yeah yeah, yeah then hands down i'll be taking the yamaha yeah comfort wise you hit the wind it's it's yeah this the screen blocks better wind yeah i mean and the, the whole KTM, tank and everything does yeah. the ktm by comparison is really quite compact right it um is. it feels much more like a race bike it yeah. feels like ktm it, and, <laughs> you know? and it is yeah, yeah i mean if you if you've ever ridden a 890 juke 1290 juke like any of those things they're, yeah. they're stumpy short little things angry little bastards they're ready to handle as aggressively as possible exactly and hit things as aggressively as possible for their class yeah. and that's um where you push a tenere outside his comfort zone the and it comes into its comfort zone yeah and it starts just telling you to go further saying it's fine yeah and you know, we have the fuel range to go further. Um, we have 
plenty of suspension capability yeah. to take the you wherever you want to go. Eight ninety is just money. It's really, really good for yeah. a stock adventure bike to be able to handle off road scenarios, jumping, landing, yeah. drop offs, everything. It's it's remarkable yeah. what they did tuning wise and component wise to be able to handle that. It's funny when you ride the eight ninety with that massive underslung fuel tank. Yeah. Because when you when you are on the pegs and sort of looking around, you notice that the bottom of the motor or well, bottom of the chassis is almost as wide as the handlebars. Yeah. Which is a weird feeling, especially when you, you get off the tenor is, is the opposite. super slim. Yeah. It's actually the top of the bike's wider than the bottom on yeah. a tenor. Yeah, which is traditionally how normal motorcycles are made. Yeah. So you you, you kinda have to reprogram your brain a little bit yeah. and and also know that you can hit rocks with the fuel tank. You can and it's not gonna puncture the fuel tank. Yeah, you can. It's pretty durable. There's a couple of things that are exposed. Um the pet cocks and stuff are down there exposed, but they're covering those up pretty well. The big benefit to me in performance for the fuel capacity in the tanks is th- the fuel weight just disappears on the KTM because it's yeah. so low. I mean, it's below your knees. Yeah. Most of the fuel weight. Yeah, it's in line with the axles almost. Yeah. And the Tenere is above your waist. Yeah. You really feel that. Yeah. When that thing's full of fuel, that thing has a real top heavy feel to it. It does. Yeah. You um, can feel when you pick it up off the stand or yeah. when you go around a corner or I mean, the on the street is, anyway. The Tenere is a big bike. Like yeah, it's it, a it rides like a big bike. Yeah, it feels like a big bike. It's like you get on a, a an Africa Twin, for example. Yeah. It doesn't feel that much smaller compared to an Africa Twin. No, an Africa Twin and a Tenere Seven Hundred, original Africa Twin that came out, you know, years ago. Yeah, pretty close. In yeah. fact, a very good comparison we should do in the future if we can find an old Africa Twin. Yeah, like a sixteen or something. Yeah, that's not yeah electronic doubt. Yeah, so similar similar details. I think going back to your Mexico trip, you mentioned to me before, and this is. Maybe one of the biggest deciding factors for people is fuel capacity on the Yamaha. Yep. It's a gallon and a, yeah. a gallon and a half, 1.2 gallons, 1.1 gallons, yep. less than a KTM 890. On paper, as you're planning your route, you got to think about that. Yep. You got to say, I got to, especially if you're in Mexico or, you know, anywhere in the Western United States where you're going off road for a long time, yep. you got to plan to carry fuel. Yeah. I if you're going to go more than, you know, X amount of miles. I mean, they say 215 miles, but. No. If you're not looking for fuel after 170 no. miles, you're going to be probably in I trouble. don't think we got, I mean, this is going back a little while now. It's nearly a year ago, but I carried a one gallon fuel bladder yeah. as well, which was a pain in the ass because it took up a lot of luggage space. And obviously, yeah. you don't want to put stuff on top of the things that on top, on top of, more of the fuel. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> so that, that sucked. Um, I think we were looking for fuel. It wouldn't have been more than 150 miles at most. Just like, keep your eyes open because, yeah. you, you know, we had probably, area. I mean, there was, in theory, there was 60 to 70 miles of leeway there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, fuel mileage is always such a, it's a touchy subject because it's a, it's so dependent on how you ride. Right. Like if you're cruising along on the freeway and you're it's constant throttle, yeah, you probably will get 220 miles out of it. Yeah. But if you're going up rutty, shit hills, it's just dumping the throttle fuel when there. you're going downhill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's gonna, it's that's what that's what choose fuel. So, yeah. I mean, look for sure, you would get 150 to 160 miles easily out of a tank, right. no problem. And then you probably got another 20 miles of reserve if needed, but I'd be looking if for you're fuel riding at 150. Carefully. Where the KTM, on the other hand, you have 200 miles consistently. Yeah. No matter how you ride it, you're going to get 200 miles, unless you're just racing, racing, racing. Yeah. And you have some weird fuel consumption yeah. habit. But uh, conservatively, you have 50 to 60 miles more range on the KTM. Yeah. Yeah. Which is significant. Yeah. If you're, if you're planning a real backcountry expedition, like through Utah into Wyoming, well, those those too, fuel mileage, or in Mexico, those fuel mileage numbers are going to come into consideration. Don't forget as well, you can strap a gallon fuel tank on your on your KTM as well, and then you yeah. really get out there. Yeah, for sure. So fuel capacity range, huge deciding factor. If if you're not considering price, if if you're just hell bent on picking one of these two bikes, price is irrelevant. I want the best performing for what I'm going to do. That's got to be something that weighs on your mind. Yep. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. So, look, I, I, I suppose. We can kind of keep going for this, but like, uh, this is how this comparison goes. By the way, all yeah, the time. No, like, it just keeps being. Well, I'm never going to use electronics, and you're like, well, why not? Why not? Well, because I don't want them. Yeah, but they make riding better yeah. 99 percent of the time. Hey, you got cruise control. Yeah, but what if they break? <laughs> then you have a Tenere 700 still. If if all the electronics stop working, my like ABS traction yeah. control, you yeah, still yeah. have an 890 with no yeah, traction control. Exactly. <laughs> so right. so this is how it goes. We always ramble on about it because it's a 
it's a hotly debated comparison. It is. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't even know which one I would really go for. In fact, I do. Like, I would take the KTM. I'd take. I'd take, I'd take the KTM if money were no option. But you just keep going back to that same argument of it's the, the same price. Argument. Yeah. Like, you know, if you've got ten grand to spend, you buy the Tenere, and, and it's and you're pumped. And it's a dope bike. Like, I've seen and done some pretty cool stuff on that thing, yeah. and been very surprised at how capable it was. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to. Especially if you're, I think if you're a taller guy as well, right. there isn't even the price difference. You're going to go and buy the Tenere because yeah, the, the KTM room. gets to be pretty cramped um, when you're really getting after it. It's not, on the road, it's not so bad, but when you're yeah. trying to stand up and move around, you need that extra room. Um, but yeah, the I think the Yamaha is brilliant value. In fact, it's probably one of, if not the best value bikes on the market, full stop in any category. Right I, I would agree. And I think that's why it's in this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So you it's, can never go wrong with buying that thing. It's a challenge to KTM because mostly because of the price. Yeah. If it was a $12,000 bike, we wouldn't even have this conversation no. as, as long as we're having it now. No. Um, I went to the Yamaha intro in Spain. Yep. I've ridden it numerous times in the US, in California. Um, I've raced a KTM 890 at a, um, you know, rally race thing at the KTM Ultimate adventure challenge um off really silly terrain um i've raced against ktm 890s and national hair and hounds and sprint enduros with quinn cody um i know what that bike is capable of doing mm. in basically stockish form maybe a suspension upgrade it's insane it's an off-road race bike yeah um there's no doubt that i would pick an 890 adventure r for my money because I've tasted what it can do yeah. with the with, with the class, benefits <laughs> with the performance benefits that it comes with. Um, I have friends that have bought Yamaha Tenere seven hundreds, and I'm always like, "Good job! Yeah. That bike's amazing. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a it's a brilliant bike. Yeah, it's it's, it's very difficult to fault. I mean, the, there are some. I mean, the brakes on it are pretty rubbish. Uh, I got to say, uh, especially yeah. on the street, the brakes brakes are pretty crap. Um, yeah, but the and the suspension definitely shows itself uh, shows its yeah, less expensive side. So we say rather than don't want to say cheap, but I think they mirror each other. I think again, you're you're in a ten thousand dollar price range. Your suspension is going to reflect that. Yeah, um, I think it's tunable to be fine. Mm. Um, and the you brake, can upgrade it. The brake components are the same. They yeah. look the same as a KTM Brembo caliper, but the stuff that connects, you know, your hand to the brake is not the same. No, they don't work the same. No, um, but it's still. A really good value at ten thousand dollars. Yeah, it's insanely good value. I mean, it's kind of hard to wrap wrap up. Which I mean, like we both would go to the KTM just for the performance value. Yep, and because you and I are both a bit more inclined for competition, We're I guess. Spoiled too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Very spoiled. Like, I mean, if you have the inclination to have the best bike in the class, the KTM eight ninety Adventure R is arguably the best bike in this class. Yeah. If you want a bike that's enjoyable and you want to upgrade from something like a KLR. 650 or you have an xr 650l in your garage and you want something with more wind protection you want to travel a little bit further distance or a drz 600 or something like that and you're like i want a bigger adventure bike now mm. and you see a ten thousand dollar yamaha that's a great option yeah. it's an incredible improvement over some of those bikes yeah especially yeah, on its no doubt. long travel capabilities but um it also can ra rally off-road pretty yeah. well too so yeah. it's a good choice i think in the end, KTM has a platform that is proven fantastic. It's probably going to stick around for a few years. Yamaha has this bike that has a bit of a a bit of a fuel capacity issue for the market, mm. and I'm worried that they're going to put a big tank on it to take care of that, and that's really going to affect the bike to me. It's going yeah. to make it worse because yeah. there's nowhere for fuel to go that's going to make it handle better. Yeah, aside from a total redesign, on, yeah. which is I don't not think gonna they're going to do it. No, motor is amazing. Don't touch. Don't touch the Yamaha Tenere 700 Yamaha. Just yeah, leave it just alone. Just leave it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good bike. <laughs> fantastic. So, yep. that's it. Uh, read the story. There's a lot more details on our opinions. Uh, we even threw Sean Finley in there because he's owned a few bikes and yep. he's got some pretty good opinions on that. He's actually in the purchase yeah. market right now for yeah. one of these bikes. So, he he's is. making a really big decision. So, <laughs> yeah. it's been a lot of fun talking about these bikes. It's a comparison I hate to talk about, but it's always fun when I get into it. Um, on paper, not comparable. Yeah. Not comparable. Two different worlds. When you get them in the dirt, get them on the street, they start getting a little closer together. So really, comes down to price. comes down to what you're going to do as a rider 
what you want to do with it. And you got to be true to yourself, you man. Be honest, man. Got to be honest. I'm a spoiled brat. I'm honest about that. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> Give me an 890 Adventure R Rally. Yeah. That's the one I want. With the fruit. With the fruit, with the big suspension. Yeah. I'm gonna not do any wheelies. No. But I'm going to do some six skids. <laughs> right. See you guys. Right. Thanks, guys. We're done. Cheers.